So I have um, 601, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Um, this meeting is being recorded and will be available on the town YouTube channel. The listing of matters are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. Uh, the Zoom meeting ID is 833-8933-1495, passcode 757057, and by phone 309-205-3325. Todd Johnny and the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, so the first item is just an update on the FY24 budget. So tomorrow night is the finance committee review for us. If it's 7.45 PM, so I'm just going to attend. I don't know if we'll have any questions. Um, I never got asked by the town administrator to defend it. So he probably just thought it was fine. So we'll just see what happens tomorrow at the finance committee meeting. Good to me. Um, the next is discuss election of new officers. This came up last time, but because we just had a minimum of four people, we decided to postpone it. I don't know if people still want to do that. It's not like it's critical that we do this. It just We've had a change. It, it's, it was a year ago that I started as chairman and we said I would do it for one year and then have an election. We've had a change of membership. So I think it's just appropriate to do it now, but people wish to wait till the next meeting when there's more people, we can do that. It's up to you. As far as I'm concerned, you're going to remain there. <laughs> so <it's, laughs> I hope Because so. <laughs> I think you do a great job. Thank you. Um, do we want to have that? Yeah, so be final voting now. Okay, so we only so, have- It doesn't like, change how I'm going to- um, Tom Burpin was our clerk um, and he's left. So we technically do not have a clerk now. Um, I've been doing the meeting minutes. So I'm fine continuing to do that. So the responsibility of the clerk at this point would really just be, if I'm not at a meeting, I'm the meeting. So yeah, and that's not going to be me either. So. Does somebody wish to be the clerk? It, okay, all right. The, the shaking get yeah, I would be willing to Ball? I don't okay. say, I don't myself as a clerk. Right. Great. Um, so I guess if somebody wants to make a motion for, I'll make a motion to uh, nominate Paul, Paul, Paul and for the clerk and uh, Dan Higgins for the two have chair. to do it separately. No, no, the chairman. Okay. Second. Again. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you. So, so where is that piece of? So one thing is there's a. Um, the accountant has a form. If we have any invoices, there's a form of who can sign off for them and in what order. So um, I'm just going to say the first person who would sign off on an invoice, if we ever had one, would be right. myself. But if I'm not available, then it would be Paul. And then yourself. Okay. You're cheating. Um, <laughs> I'm actually looking at a spot figurino. <laughs> -E 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 I thought you were copying this. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I don't know. I guess you're a member. You can sign off. You know the Dighton residents. It doesn't matter. I, no, I they still think it needs to be on here. I'm just going to put Raphael next. Sure. And then I'll have him fill this out. Um, and then um, so, oh, if you just want to sign there, the Lord okay. nice. So this is just, if I can't do it, then Paul. If Paul can't do it, then you. Yeah, if you can't do it, then Raphael. And if you can't do it, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Come to me, he's with Mo. I always end up looking around my car frantically pulling at the last second. And if you just want to skip the space for Raphael to sign, and yeah. then sign John. Yeah. Um, discuss on the annual report. So this is due by April 3rd. So we kind of have to do it tonight. 
which and I sent out an email. I don't know if you've had a chance to see. I know you looked at it. Yeah, John. I did read it as well. Okay. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah. So this just goes in the town um, annual yeah. report. Each committee has to submit something about what they were doing and so forth. So this is a draft. Um, you want to look it over, and if it's okay, then yeah, I liked it a lot. I yeah, it was okay. I thought it was good. okay. So I have a just one comment. I shared it with my colleagues at the chamber. Say, hey, this is what we're doing, right? Uh, just so you know, right? And um, the comment I got back from Chris, which I thought was an interesting comment, um, is that um, she was uh, was wondering if you could add around the business network event. Um, that we included access to small business resources such as SCORE, SEED. I can send you this in an email if you'd yeah. like, you know, but it just says here are the other resources that are there that were available to the Dighton business, okay. you know, businesses that attended. So somebody want to make a motion that we accept this with the additional verbiage that he just described i'll yeah like, i draft it in so it's absolutely why i'll make a motion to accept that with very small change okay second, second. all in favor all right all right, all right. awesome um new business interest in town i don't know if you saw it on facebook it's a new place called Jesse's Diner. That's yeah, cool. where Nana's yeah. used to be, right? Yeah. Like, I think she opens this week. Like, tomorrow. Jesse's Diner? Yeah, you know where Nana's place used to be? Oh, down in... Uh, yeah, down across from Zeke's and all I, that. Oh, okay. I don't know exactly when that closed, maybe a year or two years ago, but there's a new place opening up called Jesse's Diner. Oh, good. So she, she's got the sign up even now, and I think she's, on her Facebook page, she said she was trying to open up by tomorrow, I think. so. Beautiful. Excellent. Um, I'm stop. Yes, check it out. I think we ought to have breakfast. Absolutely. There's a new travel agency in town called CNEXT. Really? NEXT. So it's home based. The owner lives in Dighton. The office is here. He's, he runs it. He does, does have two employees who are in Europe. Um, so they work remotely, but it's a travel agency. So he's in Dighton. He opened up. Last really? Week. A travel agent. Huh? Yeah. I didn't think there was anymore. Yeah, interesting. Um, it's fantastic. A new company I don't know too much about called Pagan Graphics. Pagan Graphics? Yeah. They, um, um, as people come in with business certificates now, um, Mr. Pacheco is sending them to me. So that's how I'm getting some oh, of this. Great. Um, so I don't have any information about that last company, exactly what they do. I just know that they're opening in town. And again, it's uh, home address was the one listed, so it's another home based business. Great. Right. Right. I, I, yeah. I so, no. May I ask um, when people are filling out the certificate, added that verbiage on there, do you want to be on the thing um, on our website? Yes. <laughs> are people opting in? Yeah. So not everybody, like for example, Pagan Graphics like, said no. Okay. I don't know. Maybe this, this isn't their market or something. I don't know what they do, but. Um, but most are, yes. Great. Yeah. Beautiful. That's great. Um, oh, it is. So the next one was, we had talked about a job fair or some kind of matching of employers and employees, whether it's a fair or virtual or something, and you wanted to go over that. This, this yeah, if you don't mind, I just wanted to give everybody an update on on this. And Joe, yeah. I think you've got one or there's, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. So um, yes, the you know background was there were some business owners in Dighton that were suggesting or asking if the town could potentially sponsor a job fair. Um, last last meeting we talked a little bit about it, um, and then I volunteered to do some you know uh, legwork. So here's where we are with the legwork. So I contacted Dighton Rehoboth, Bristol Aggie, BP, um, and when I talked to those folks, they said, you know, John you ought to try to cast a wide net um, so that you get as many students as possible to attend this thing. So they suggested that I also include Southeastern uh, Regional Voc Tech, which is in Easton, which has a really great program. Absolutely. Um, and Diamond Regional Voc Tech, which is over in Fall River. Um, so I didn't contact them yet because I wanted to 
get a feel from my colleagues here whether we should, you know, reach that wide or not. I mean, if everybody is okay, I would do that. Um, I, I, if I may, um, like if you go in that far, then you're looking at a serious amount of traveling for anyone. Well, of course, we don't know what businesses are going to show up. So that's that's what. Yeah, we're going to we're going to talk about that one. Okay. But my, my my thing is, is the further we go, the more traveling these students are going to have to do, and I I don't think it matters either way. But that that's my opinion. Uh, going in as far as New Bedford, yeah, uh, that that's probably yeah. This was no, um, I thought Fall River Diamond is Fall River. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was actually a New Bedford. Okay, that's not too bad. Yeah, it's right down the highway. I'm only looking at 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're right off of 24. Okay. Yeah. That, that's the only the only drawback that I see if it, if it was a long traveling. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, so when I spoke with the schools, they all basically said they supported the idea and that they would promote the idea within their school. So that was a good thing. Great. BP, by the way, said, hey, we're having we already have a job fair lined up on May 12th. Um, and we would love to have some Dighton businesses represented there. So, um, so the employers would need to sign up by the end of April um, if they want to participate in the job fair at BP. Um, but that's something that, again, let's, that let's we can talk a little bit about. It's 100% okay. free. Oh, okay. Okay, great. So, uh, great. Okay, good, good, good. No charge. Okay. And no later than the end of April for the sign up? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, and then, um, so then uh, most suggested, okay, so here's what I learned so far, right? Um, is that try to get as many schools and students as possible. Um, they're all interested. The Chamber of Commerce said that they would help promote the event with social media posts and that sort of thing. So that's fine. Um, then the challenges started to you know, mount up the hurdles, let's call them that. Like everybody said, well, if you're going to do it, it's going to happen May, right? It's going to happen soon, right? right? These kids are right. out of here, right? right. Um, and then, so then they said, well, you know, logistic wise, between now and May is going to be a little bit challenging, right? So, you know, the, I started to realize that there are going to be some hurdles of doing this, right? Um and one of the things that they did say is that if you're going to do it, make sure it's a good thing, right? Maybe make sure it's a good first impression, um, because if you flub it up, this, you know what I mean, this won't be good. Right. You know if we do I mean? well, they'll remember it. If we do poorly, they'll remember it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so then let's get to the question. So for me is how do we gauge the employer interest, right? So we've had two employers come to us about potential job fairs, right? You sent me two, two people, the sash person and the other person who did recruiting, right? Um, of um, people that were in previously incarcerated. Oh, yeah, there's a, nothing about there's a home business in town that does a lot of things for prisoners. Yeah. Yeah. And and new release, they publish magazines, they have a catalog. Interesting. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, I reached out to both of those people. Mm -hmm. So the sash person, who was the one that, you know, got this whole thing going, right. um, said he would get back to me. He said, okay, great. I'm glad that you're thinking about doing that. Thanks. You know, I'll get back to you with some of the ideas that we have. He has not done that, but I will follow up with him. The other person that had the prisoner thing never got back. I texted her and left her a voice message okay. and so didn't hear back. So I didn't. By the way, it's oh, it's placement too, we believe, for newly released. So it's not just people currently incarcerated. Because Oh, no, that's what I'm fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they were formally incarcerated. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, um, so uh, I didn't get a good, warm and fuzzy feeling, you know, about this. And um, so one of the things I guess I would ask is how many employers do you think we need to make this a success? And how are we going to get them, right? I think it's going to be 
a challenge. I do. And then the other thing is, are we adding additional benefit by doing this versus helping something like BP really promote and tell this type of businesses like BP's got this, you know, they're organized. You probably want to, if you're looking for help, you know, it's a good place for you to go. Right. Are we running our own adding value <clears throat> as opposed to just like pointing those people who need help to something like BP's existing one? Exactly. I mean, that's so the question I had was, what is the best way that we can connect employers and yeah. potential employees? Right. And if that is us promoting the fact that these vocational programs exist and that there are job fairs that they have, maybe that's what we do. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I think because of the fact that the time, timing mm -hmm. is not there on our, on our side. Yeah. I think if we were to rest employment. Yeah. And yep. doing that. Yeah. And then maybe for next year, we can try to get Bristol Aggie, yeah. things like that to help us out. Yeah. But we start a little earlier. Exactly. Like January or something like that. I agree. I agree. I think maybe we try to slate it for next year and then see. Um, this also gives us more time to feel out the businesses in Dighton to say, would you be interested, right? Because we've been challenged with getting our people to people right with. yeah yeah i think that's all we air yeah that's yeah right. yeah yeah it's not what we want to say but exactly that's the reality of it right <clears throat> yeah okay good beautiful so so then my question is if the schools have their own job fair can dighton promote it on their town website and if we can do that beautiful or how do we do that how do we you know, how do we help these schools out and, you know, I don't know, get the awareness within the town that that is that these events are happening? Do we know if the high school is also doing anything or are we not? We don't know yet. I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't I didn't have a good conversation. We played phone tag with the gentleman from the high school, but I can reach out to him if you'd like. Yeah. I, I I would love to know whether they do anything or the high school, if they do anything. That yeah, okay. They, they do have seniors coming out. Yes. And it's, in my opinion, their they're right to actually help them yeah. find a job and things like that. Yeah. So, I mean, not their right there. I, I, I would like to see them helping the students uh, get yeah, a job. Absolutely. Like and, and for the businesses in town, if they're looking for people that have trade, trade, you know, experience, it would be a win-win, right? It would be a yeah. great win-win. Yeah. So um, how how do we do that? <laughs> you know, can we do it through the website? Can we? I mean, it's the towns. I mean, town is part of DP. It's part of Aggie. It's obviously part of the local high school. It's there's no reason I don't, I don't see why the town can't promote the school system. It's part yeah. of it. Mean, yeah, I feel like it's probably just an email request to Leanne Kerr in a way, to be honest. Yeah. I know she maintains the website for the most part. Okay. And okay. Uh, I, I obviously can't speak for anybody, but I, yeah. I can't see why she wouldn't be happy to do that. Okay. She's been very accommodating with everything. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Do you want me to take that on? If you want, sure. Sure. I'll give you Leanne's email if you don't okay. have Beautiful. It. Sure. Yeah. Um, and it would be nice if. I mean, I don't know how much space they can give us. They do like news blasts, which are like maybe two, three paragraphs at most generally. But okay. um, for the employers to know, like when we say BP does, has electrical programs or car training, this is really what the kids are learning. It's like, it's a lot of stuff. These are the skills they have. So you yes. can see whether it fits with you. That might mean us including links out to the schools or you know, exactly. Collecting that information at some place and making it available online for people to go look at. Or So I have the links to the programs okay. um, and in the back here, you'll see that I, you know, I, <laughs> put, um, I did all the legwork on what all of these programs are. 
and they are really pretty amazing. Oh, so I can that. give links to the programs for each of the schools and we've got the contact information, you know, for each one of them. Okay. So we could then maybe put that in um, the posting for the town as well, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so I will do that. And if, I mean, you can see, see me on that email to Leanne just in case she writes back, who are you or something. <laughs> okay, okay, sure. Okay, sure. And actually, what I'll say at the meeting at the DDIC meeting, we agreed that I would follow up and. Okay. Okay. Yeah, cool. All um, the schools are, this is just the uh, Bristol Plankton? No, so each page, right? Um, you'll see oh. DR program. And then here's all the programs that DR has. And then Bristol Aggie program. Here's okay. the contact. And I just jumped on. You said the last page. Oh, okay. Okay. I jumped on to the last page. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So each one of these programs, I, I found out what they consist of, who are the who's the person that runs it, um, and their contact information. Yeah. So I mean, I can see the value including all of them, including Southeastern Regional and Demon Regional. Because we're trying to keep this more local. Yeah. Do we wish to include them as, as along with DP and the high school and Aggie? Question is asked them. The other question I would have is say like Bristol Aggie, uh, do they have students from different cities in different towns? They do. So must other schools have the same thing? Yes. So that kind of changes my train of thought of what I started saying yeah. that it'll include students from all communities. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I think we should reach out to all of them. I mean, there might be Diamond students that go to Diamond. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So right. Because they couldn't get the program at BP. Say they wanted to be an HVAC yes, person. Yes. They apply to BP. The program's full. They go to Diamond. You know what I mean? Yeah. So okay. Diamond, I haven't, uh, I, well, it's not there any longer. The, the HVAC guy uh, is a very good friend of mine. In fact, he's been my HVAC guy for a long time. Oh. He was the youngest HVAC licensed person in Massachusetts. Wow. Well, he's well. almost 50 now, but yeah. his son is actually one of my tenants here at uh, yeah. the house. You know? yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty amazing. You know, and, uh, they do great stuff. They uh, do. I my eyes have been like um, wide open about the programs, that, the availability of these programs, and what they do. It's it's great. I, I love these these things because you know people say you got to go to college. You got to go to college, but not because I'm not a college person. I uh, I still feel that trades. Is gotta come in. Oh, it's the play it's in a big way because if it doesn't, uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have problems going forward. Yeah, I mean, right now you can't find a carpenter anywhere. Nope. You can't find a, a young person. I have a friend of mine that's an electrician. He's I can't find anybody to to work. You know, and it, it's it's painful mm -hmm. when you have a lot of work and you can't. Yeah. Hey, well, it's limiting to the business growth. Absolutely. Right. But. So, um, so good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then I've got my, I've got my next steps. I will reach out to each one of these uh, folks again, tell them that we're probably not going to do our own, but we're happily support theirs. I will reach out to Leanne and get her the information and um, we'll see how it goes from there. But I think that's a great idea. Um, thank you, everybody, for your um, interest and support. Who did you talk to over at uh, Bristol Appointment? Um, the guy was great, actually. Greg? John, uh, Greg, uh, wait a second. Schumann. Schumann. Nice guy. Yeah, great I, guy. I actually talked to him uh, a couple of times. He called me back to see we had made any progress, what we were going to do and stuff. Oh, that's interesting because he said he would call me in a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he had the wrong person. I told him that you actually knew the principal there. Okay. And uh, yeah. he goes, well, that's okay. Either one, he's just going to turn him over to me. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't yeah. really matter. So I did talk to Greg, great guy. Yeah. And he was the one that said, 
you know, you should really cast a wide net and that sort of thing. And so, yeah, yeah. I also, the uh, carpentry shop is the, the teacher there is a very good friend of mine as well. So great. And he's, he just started this year. He was a, a crane operator and he did side jobs as, as car, you know, a carpenter. And then he got that job there. And he's, great. I called him one day and it was cold. He goes, Joe, I'm in here. It's so warm. It's, yeah. uh, <laughs> he's going to get a 401k. It's good to see that. Awesome. He's advancing. You know? Great. Well, thank you. Um, so it's not on the agenda because I wasn't quite sure how much time we had, but we're making good progress here. Um, the last meeting we had talked about maybe having somebody from the assessor's office um, to a future meeting, and not only for our benefit, but kind of do it like an information session. Obviously, it'll be recorded so people can watch it if they don't show up. Particularly, you know, the businesses in town, like what are the things they're supposed to be doing? What can they expect in terms of how the town operates and particularly the assessor's office? Yes. And, a lot of people I know when I was calling around for about business, getting on the business directory listing, the home-based businesses were like, well, I mean, does it really impact me? I mean, am I supposed to be taxed? I've never been taxed. And are you going to make me be taxed if I'm listed? And like, well, you have a business certificate with the town. I mean, that's, you're, you're already listed with the town as, you know, an official business. I don't really know what the procedure is beyond that, but they just had questions. I think you had said you might follow up with someone from the assessors. Yes. Yes, I um I actually am expecting to see him tonight. Okay. I know. That. The, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. But as we uh and it's been crazy right now with, with budget season, as I'm sure you know. Um so would we be trying to get something like that in before town meeting, do you think? Or would, would we be shooting for like maybe July on something like that? Um, I don't think there's a time limit unless you were hoping to get information out of it for the benefit of your mailers. And I don't know when those mailers go out. So okay. I will um I'll see what I can find out tonight and I'll shoot you an email. Okay. I mean, but as far as we're concerned, I don't think there's a there's any urgency to it. It's just I'd be very interested to hear from the assessor and and learn uh, obviously what yeah. what what that means, you know. Um yeah, because there are a number, as we know, a number of home-based businesses that are kind of under the radar and, and like we under, understand yeah, what when, the issues are. When I had the barbershop over here on this property on the corner, they taxed me a portion of the property commercial. And the rest of it is residential. And... I haven't gone in there because there is no room, no more commercial there. So I got to go in there and see because it was actually at the time, this is going back oh, 20 years ago, it was costing me $300 more a year. And uh, I, you know, I just paid it. You know, What am I going to say? But I'm wondering if that's going to be something that's going to go on if, if this goes forward, if people are going to find an extra tax bill because you're running your business out of your home, mm -hmm. it is an extra $300 or $200 mm -hmm. or whatever. You, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's a uh, touchy, touchy yeah. subject, I oh, think. Yeah. yeah, I get those phone calls. <laughs> but it's not like we're changing anything. We're just asking the question and maybe the assessors are kind of just overwhelmed and haven't caught up with what's out there. Um, but these are people who perhaps should be paying some uh, tax. And I've owned that property that's up to for them. 30 I mean, years. And yeah. they, they caught up with me right off the bat because oh, okay. there was a sign there. But other than that, if there was no sign, I don't think they would have caught yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm sure there's a lot of home offices. When you say, what's your home office? It's their laptop on their dining room table. Right. That is the home office. Yes. And yeah. So yeah. some town... I, this is you know way off base because it's all about the assessors. Some towns have like minimum um, assets you have to have before you even trigger anything. Like interest rates under three thousand dollars, five thousand dollars in assets. Ooh. You know, then it's just like okay, it's just we need to know that you exist, but yeah, that's it. And I don't, I, I, as far as I know, doesn't have anything such like that. Or, or so it's interesting. So if I um, 
I have a, say an IT, a little IT business, say web development, say, but I have my car has a commercial plate because it's owned by the business, then that would be a business asset, right? Yes, but you already get taxed for that as an excise tax. Oh, okay, right. That's, that's okay. Really, I mean, are you the only one involved with the excise taxes or do the assessors get involved in that? Or? Um, they get involved for like abatements and things like that. And they, but, they yeah. But you run excise yes. taxes. So that would be how the, uh, anything with a, that's registered with the DMV gets. Yeah, yeah, right. That way. Okay, so right. So they're, they're already paying on that commercial right. asset. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, true. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, input we don't have anybody on zoom uh, approval of minutes um i did send that for a minute like a copy if you need them i did get to see those oh, yeah um, okay um i propose a motion to approve the minutes okay. second i'll second all in favor aye. aye um the next set the next meeting date so sticking with the fourth month that would put us at april 24th at 6 p.m Good with that Okay, so do you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the fourth Monday of June April. April. So second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, before I adjourn, anybody have any other business they want to bring up? I did have one thing okay. that I'm hoping we could talk about at next month or a future meeting. We had a land auction recently. Yeah. Um, where we had six six tax possession uh parcels went. And they haven't closed yet, but the total of bids is $279,000. And I was at, I'm also on an associate member on the Conservation Commission. And I was at Concom the other night. And one of the winning bidders who bought one of the parcels doesn't have anything before Concom, just went to go just kind of be an observer, just be a fly on the wall, learn a little bit about how the process works. And he, he asked during public input, he said, well, if I buy a, if I buy a parcel and there might be wetlands, there might not be, I don't know. All I know is that I bought a piece of land and I want to put something on it. I want to put whatever I'm allowed to put. I don't know what to, how do I find out? How do I find out what I'm able to do? And um, nobody had a consistent answer for him. So really? yeah, nobody knew. So I'm wondering what we could do to address an issue of, like silo mentality between all different boards and committees as regards to building projects. Like would somebody start off by seeing planning? Would they start off with seeing zoning? When do they need? So if we could maybe create a, a flow chart or an infographic or something to help people understand the process. I'm thinking like a flow chart because I like visual aids. Thinking about if somebody wanted to do yep. a project. Yep. If the project is within however many feet of a wetland or something to that effect, it involves conservation. You need this. If you're going to displace 35,000 square feet, then you need stormwater and it triggers this. So that we can follow, like, does your project do this? Yes, you need to talk to planning. Does your project do this? Yes, you need to talk to stormwater. Then kind of give people and a roadmap. It's, it's not that simple um, because you don't know if the land is going to park. That's that's one. Right. You don't know what the ex extent of the wetland is. Uh, there's so many variables that go into it. Right. And people should not assume that buying at an auction is the right thing to do. Oh, certainly. Yeah, no, certainly. Buyer the you know, buy a beware. Right. So okay. And and in this case here, I didn't even attend this. And I would normally do that. Because, but I, I, I did my homework before I, it started, and ninety percent of of the, the the properties that were sold are wet. Now, when somebody says like just thing like buyer beware or, or do your own due diligence, what could we point people towards so that they can do their due diligence if they come before the auction? I'm just thinking in general. It, in it general, be okay. Be I, I would say go into the the uh, planning start? and zoning. Okay. Conservation is there. Conservation will open up their computer and say, okay, property number, blah, blah, blah. It's 90% wet. Chances of this perking are very slim. And if it does perk, 
We don't know if you're going to have Eric. So now you need an engineering firm to go out there, engineer the property yeah. to determine whether that is the case. Then you're going to come to Board of Health, Board of Health to get an appointment to perk the property. But you don't even know if you're going to be able to do that because you've got to cross wetlands to do that. It's an expensive process. Now, if there were no wetlands, let's just say you bought a piece of dry dirt, just so I understand the process. Yeah. So we can kind of take take conservation element out of it. Is that where they would start? They'd start with perking? Is that where it would begin? Yeah, but you need to have the okay from the town. Right. Oh, yeah. No, of course. To, to actually go do that I'm thinking beforehand. If, even if this is and, something. And that's not going to happen. I'm just thinking if this is something you owned already. I'm just thinking. Yes. I'm just trying to paint a picture to help people understand who they have to talk to to do what. Yeah, I, I think the first thing would be her. That's my opinion. Yeah. Uh, you you get the land to per, then you know that at least you can build on it, okay? Then from there, you got to have an engineer. Well, at the time that you have the perk, you should have an engineer on site. If you don't, then that's another problem. Uh, but it, it, I think still the best thing to do is planning and zoning and conservation in the same office. I think that was... Very well planned, very well done. Yeah, sure. People that really know this stuff there, uh, you know, uh, you, we all know her. It's uh, uh, Carrie is oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, she's fantastic. She's, she's, Absolutely. We could never found anybody better than than her to do that job. And uh, I think we should, you know, the right thing to do is that's who I would direct them to. Okay, so they would start with planning and zoning? <laughs> planning and zoning would be one. So uh, um, for businesses, not just your example is more residential, but for a business, um, Mike did write, uh, town administrator, Mike Long did write a guide for yeah, kind of walk people good. through the, so it's more textual than graphic, but <laughs> I know that at the last planning board meeting, Jeff Cavallo, the chairman of the planning board, said, I think, the planning board would like to update that guide a bit because there are things that they see were vague or misleading or just needed more information in there. So I think he might uh, be looking to like change that a bit. Okay. Um, but it could be, I agree. I mean, if it was more graphical in nature, like a flow chart, or if there was a companion that was more residential in nature, it would, that would be, you know, helpful. Yeah. I think that form already exists. Okay. Uh, and I think Carrie may have that or the building department may have. <laughs> Excellent. I'll have to get a copy. Okay. It's fantastic. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I, it was talked about in the past. Okay. Yeah. I feel old, man. <laughs> in the past. <laughs> I, don't, I forgot how many years I've been on this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it makes me feel old. <laughs> and the business guide is posted on the town website. I know you said you... Had trouble finding it one day yes. you're looking for it yes i did i just mentioned something at stephen's office about either putting it in a couple places or links in a couple places so it's not so hard to find yeah um but it's out there but you know a residential companion along the same lines could okay be helped okay for people i was struggling to find it I, and i thought there used to be a really handy link and it seemed to be disappear okay. yeah be moved yeah, yeah. I did put a link on our page, on the town site page, but I forget where it is now. I'm going to go in just the regular menu, how to find it. Okay, cool. Anything else that anybody wants to bring up? Uh, except the next motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So uh, meetings adjourned at 6.41 p.m. Great. All right. Got you out of here four minutes before you wanted to be. <laughs>